John has the VIP from Lafayette College, the college president. Here's John. Yes, I do, Gary. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to talk to Ellison Byerly, the Lafayette College president. Ellison, let's start off uh, with, with your your vision for the, for this college ever since you've been here uh the energy has been palpable and uh i think your fingerprints have been all over uh the the the, the uh the task of becoming affordable yet distinctive. Explain to us how that's going to take place. Sure, I'm happy to do that. And when you talk about energy, I don't know if you can hear the shouting behind <laughs> us, but uh, we're looking very good at the halftime. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> there's a great deal of leopard energy in the air. Um, this has been a really exciting time for Lafayette because we are in the first year of a new plan to grow the size of the college in a way that we hope will give us the kinds of resources that we need to become more affordable. Um, we have so many wonderful students excited about coming to Lafayette. Uh, we have record numbers of apps, but it's hard to make space for all those students and it's hard to find enough resources to give them the financial aid that some of them need to make Lafayette affordable and so that's basically our plan we'll be adding students over the next six to eight years growing the size of the college just a little bit and uh, gathering resources for financial aid it's um, it's always difficult when you are the terms mutually exclusive access affordability I mean if you want a Jaguar uh, it costs money uh, <laughs> and, and uh, but you want to make it affordable how do we I mean it's the I guess the value proposition has to be there. That's right. Well, it, you're right that it's all about access. It's about making it possible for a Lafayette education to be affordable for students who are talented and could benefit from a Lafayette education. We have fantastic students from all over the country and all over the world applying to Lafayette, and some of them can afford the, the Lafayette tuition, and some of them can't. And what we want is to be able to pick any student who we think would thrive at Lafayette um, on the basis of just their talent and not the basis of their family's ability to pay. And we tip our cap to all of the alumni out there who make it possible through their generous support of financial aid. It's about Absolutely. balancing the field and offering that opportunity. Allison, I'm really excited. I've been here a long time. Uh, the largest single capital project that Lafayette has ever undertaken mm -hmm. is underway right now with the Rockwell Integrated Science Center. It is very exciting. Uh, we broke ground on it in spring. Uh, right now it's just a hole in the ground, but it's starting to take shape. This will be a $75 million uh, Rockwell Integrated Sciences Center, beautiful facility, uh, one of the largest projects that Lafayette has ever undertaken, and it's going to provide cutting edge classroom space. It's going to provide innovative lab opportunities. It's going to provide um, lots of uh, opportunities for students across the college as well as in the sciences uh, to have the kind of classroom experience, uh, the small intimate classroom experience with top-notch equipment and facilities that you really need in the sciences today. It will also include our new Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and it'll include uh, great classrooms of all kinds. Absolutely. More word to come on that. That is an exciting... Lafayette turns out so many entrepreneurs, and uh, to have a center for uh, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship is, tr is truly in our in, in our wheelhouse. Allison, uh, it's Lafayette Lehigh football weekend, and we'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about athletics. Uh, <laughs> Bruce McCutcheon, our longtime athletic director, has announced his retirement. We've uh, begun to process to hire, uh, the process to hire a new uh, AD, uh, but we've also uh, undertaken an athletic study to talk about our programs and how we can become uh, more competitive. Um, absolutely. You know, uh, Bruce's decision to step down brings to an end an important era in athletics uh, for Lafayette. Uh, he's done a wonderful job, and we wish him well in the future. At the same time, as we embark on a search for a new athletics director, it's perfect timing that we're also in the process of concluding a review process that we've been undergoing for about a year. We've had a committee that involves uh, coaches, students, faculty, staff, trustees, and alumni looking at uh, where we stand competitively in the Patriot League, how we can be stronger, what resources we need in various areas, and it's been a great process of just looking at uh, what we have done well and what we can do better in the future. And so when the new athletics director comes on board, uh, they'll have the opportunity to fin finish up that process and really uh, make their mark on the new strategic plan for athletics. Well, last night was our Hall of Fame dinner. We have it every year mm -hmm. before this game. And uh, an interesting announcement was made last night. Uh, it's uh, all about uh, a fundraising effort uh, that's called uh, uh, Le uh, the, the Leopard Champions Fund. The Leopard Champions Fund. Absolutely. Uh, a number of, as a, a kind of in conjunction with the review process, a number of alumni who became aware of the kinds of resource needs that we have and what it takes to make a championship team uh, came together in an effort to put together a general scholarship fund. Uh, the Champions Fund uh, was a result of a fundraising challenge from an anonymous donor who put out um, a, a significant sum of money and then helped persuade other people to join. Uh, we now have a $1 million fund. And 
and we hope to add even more to it in the future. It's going to be very helpful to us in becoming even stronger and more competitive in the future. Well, when you're a school our size and you try to do all the things we do at such a high level, it does come with a cost. But again, a tip of the cap to all of our alumni who make very it happen. We're a private school, and we <laughs> depend on our uh, uh, those who went before. Uh, Allison, to that uh, to that point, uh, uh, the, the the college continues to uh, undergo a, a, a study of our athletics uh, program. Can you give us an update? Any uh, any uh, news on that end? Sure. Um, the the process has been, as I said, very helpful in bringing together lots of uh, elements of the community. And even though we haven't formally concluded it, we've actually already started implementing some of the suggestions that came out. For example, our admissions office is working even more closely with athletics in the recruiting process. We began a new program of bringing together liaisons from the uh, admissions department assigned to particular teams uh, to help us make sure that the admissions department has a great understanding of the specific needs of each team when recruiting. Uh, that's just one example of some of the ways in which we've looked at our processes as well as our resources to think about how we can work well together as an institution to support something that's critical for Lafayette. Well, what people have to understand, Allison, is that uh, there are so many levers to push when you're running a college like Lafayette. Mm -hmm. The arts campus downtown, the engineering program, mm -hmm. now the new sciences center, and of course, uh, the, the anchor for us has always been our tremendous liberal arts program, and uh, it, it, it's good to, for those interested in our always historically good athletic programs mm -hmm. uh, that, we're, that we're examining those now. We want to bring them to the level of our other programs. Absolutely. Lafayette is about excellence in everything we do, and when you think about athletics and academics and how they come together really uniquely for students in the Patriot League, uh, we find that it helps us recruit strong athletes to offer tremendous academic opportunities, and as you can tell by the crowds of students here in the stadium, a lot of students who come here for academic reasons um, are totally devoted to Lafayette Athletics and want to see it be as strong as there, possible. There, there is no question about that. Allison, uh, uh, let's close. We could not close without talking about uh, the incredible success of a $400 million mm -hmm. capital campaign. Now, Absolutely. if you go look at Harvard or Cornell or Princeton and you look at their capital campaigns, $400 million seems modest by standards. Mm -hmm. But per capita, for the size of our school, that is an incredible number. It's an ambitious number, um, but we're well on our way to meeting it. I think we're now at about 373. Uh, we're closing in on a $400 million goal. We might even nudge a little past that $400 million <laughs> goal. Um, and while that does sound like a lot of cash in many ways, it represents long-term commitments, uh, sometimes extending over years. Uh, much of that money has come in already. Some will come in over the coming years. Uh, but it represents tremendous commitment from the community um, towards our major goals, towards strengthening the integration of liberal arts and engineering, towards supporting financial aid for students, towards making athletics and our academic programs stronger. All of of those things will help Lafayette to grow and be stronger in the future. Well, it's a, it's a Saturday. We don't want to bore any of our numbers people out there with too many numbers, but I don't want you to go away, Allison, without talking about one program, one one objective that I know is near and dear to your heart, and that is financial aid. We want to become a need-blind institution by 2025, if not sooner. Explain to us in your, uh, in your vision why that's so important. If you think about what makes a college or a university top-notch, what distinguishes the very best schools, it's having the very best students. You need to be able to bring the strongest students regardless of resources. And the very top schools are what's called need-blind, meaning they don't look at financial need, they just admit the strongest students and they offer the financial need, financial aid necessary to support them. We're currently in a state where we're not quite there yet. We still have to take finances into account in making some of those tough decisions. And I think our whole alumni community would love to see us be able to move to the point that that is not a consideration and where if a student is strong enough to be a leopard, they're a leopard. Ellison, we just can't thank you enough. It's been a, a terrific ride. I can't believe, has it been five years, This is, this years? is the start of my fifth year, my believe goodness. it or not. Yeah. So you're a postgraduate at this point. Exactly, that's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Gary, Michael, it's always a pleasure to talk to Allison. You can see where all the energy comes from. And let's uh, hope that some of the energy carries over into the second half. Absolutely. Beat Lehigh. high. <laughs> Gary, Michael, back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, John, for a terrific interview and to President Allison Byerly.